Next up in this training series, Drawing and Modifying Products Part 2. So we're back inside of our project with a set of cabinets that we already have drawn, thinking that we were ready to send it off to the customer for their approval, only to find out that they wanted to come back and make some more changes. But it's no problem for us. We'll roll with the punches, and because working with Toolbox is so easy to go back into a project and make some changes, it's really not a big deal. So let's pick back up where we left off on our last project and see what we got to do to get this job ready for the customer. So let's just do a quick review of what we have in this drawing again. We have our tall cabinets with the base cabinet run on that wall with a window, and the other run of cabinets with the uppers at three feet high. Now, of course, the customer wanted to make some changes before we got too far along with this job, and they asked us to go into the run of base cabinets and provide an opening for a refrigerator. So now we'll go ahead and review some of the changes that we need to make. This is what we need to now provide so they have that opening for the refrigerator. So we'll start off by going back into the modified products and first off erasing that product in the center. So you can see here as I'm as I'm hovering over trying to select the cabinet it wants to pick up some of those toe kick parts as well. So what I'm going to do is just change our view make it a little bit easier so I'm sure that I'm selecting the cabinet that I want to delete. So Go back into the micro realm palette now. We'll select the erase command from the modified products. And now that cabinet's gone. So before we start modifying that toe kick, let's double check to see what kind of space that we have in between. Because the opening that we want to have remaining is going to be 24 inches. I'm going to double check that with by using our distance command. Selecting the first point. And then the second point. You can see there above the command line that we have 28 inches in between. Now, of course, I could have just remembered the size of the cabinet that I originally had drawn and didn't need to check that, but just another way to double check things using our distance command. Now we're going to move this cabinet, number 104, to the left. After selecting our product and then selecting a base point, I'm going to turn on my ortho rather than trying to always make sure I have my polar tracking going in the right direction and just give it a value of four. And now we can move that cabinet over four inches, give us that 24 inches that we need. And then it's just a matter of going through the products and updating those, taking four inches off of our countertop. Now let's spacebar to repeat that command, going into the prompts of our toe kick, taking our four inches off there, so that looks good. but we still have to do something with this, with this opening. We're gonna have the refrigerator going all the way to the floor. So I'm just double checking the distance of the toe kick as it's hanging off the left-hand side of that cabinet. We have 21 inches and then subtracting that from our 24. I know that's three inches that I wanna take off the other toe kick. And I could, of course could have measured the other way, which would probably been easier, right? Just check that three inches, but hey, there's always more than one way to do it, right? Okay, now into the other toe kick. And we're gonna change the overall width of that to 27, but you can see what happens there because its base point was at the left-hand side of the product. That's, that's its origin point, I guess you could say. So when you make a change to the width, you can see that's what it does. So we'll just have to go into the modified products and move that product, selecting it. And then the base point, we'll select the top of the toe kick and make sure that we're snapping it directly to the bottom of the base cabinet side. Okay, so that takes care of the toe kicks. Those are ready to go. We don't need to worry about adding finished sides to that toe kick, get covered up by the refrigerator. So now let's move over to the upper cabinets. And a simple thing that we can do when we already have a bunch of cabinets like this already drawn is by going back into the project wizard and just making a a sweeping change throughout the project and then just redrawing these cabinets. So what we don't want to do is have to go into each one of these and change the height because the customer in this situation asked us to make them a little bit shorter so they had more space from the floor to the bottom of the upper. Right now they only got 48 inches. We'll need to give them about another four inches of space. So we're going to go into the project wizard to change the upper cabinet height. We'll get there through our project properties and then the project wizard tab. Now let's go back to the upper cabinet height and make the change there to 32. 
So just to mention another thing about these formulas that you're seeing in red, I know I said something about it before in our previous video that those are typically a formula driven value and you don't want to change it. But when it comes to the project wizard, some of these things that you see in red are coming in that way because of conversion formulas that are baked into the software. That's just the default setup. So by all means, you can get in there and stomp on all these formulas and make sure they're exactly what you need by setting just a hard or static value. to them. And all that means is that they're no longer looking to another part of the software for its information. So feel comfortable making all these changes necessary for your projects to be sure that they're set up the right way. Now back to the drawing. And it's just a matter of redrawing all these products. We'll type in a W for window. And now be sure to highlight all the products with our window selection. Now you can see all the item numbers are the ones that are highlighted and not the products themselves. So one thing to keep in mind when you're using the window option, Toolbox is looking for the actual item number. So if something doesn't have an item number, like a wall, for instance, that window option isn't going to work. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to redraw a bunch of walls using this window option and you're asking, hey, why isn't it working? It's because there's not an item number. So Toolbox just doesn't know if it's a product that it can redraw or not. But when it comes to redrawing a bunch of cabinets, absolutely. Window is definitely the way to do it. So you can see as it's redrawing all these products, there it is. They're all at 32 now. We didn't have to spend the time to go through each one individually to make that change. So that's a quick revision that you can make on these drawings, which is something that you're going to have to do throughout these projects, is learning how to go back in, make some changes, and do it the most efficient and fastest way possible, right? Because at this point, the clock's ticking, customers are asking about lead time and all that good stuff. So we'll be doing a lot more of this throughout this entire series. But for now, that's just the very basics of going back through and making a couple revisions to this drawing. Let's change the views around so we can get a different perspective on how these products are looking in our drawing. Showing an elevation on both walls. And to show the front of the other cabinets, we have to change it to a left view. Not as easy to see with those other products in the way, but just a good way to take a look around your drawing and see how everything's looking, making sure it's, it's what you want. And that brings us to the end of this video with another project in the books and ready to move on to the next one. So until then, keep working towards making extraordinary things with these using Microbellum Toolbox.